Vivian was told that she had the part on Christmas Day. January 1939. Filming must begin before the end of the month. And Gone with the Wind begins to take on a physical existence. Decisions on the other roles now became imperative. Selznick finally resigned himself to the idea that the English matinee idol, Leslie Howard, was the best available Ashley. I want to see makeup color on Mr. Howard. We need to lessen age around the eyes. He was 46 at the time, and extensive experiments with makeup and hair dye were necessary to make him look appropriately youthful. Howard looks older than in the first test. Slick down his hair more and kill the lines under his eyes. Ashley may look a little older in the last half of the picture, but in the first scenes, he must look really young and romantic. Leslie's hairpiece is good, but make the sideburns heavier. Go stronger on the lower eyelashes. Leslie Howard was as reluctant to take over the role in Gone with the Wind as Clark Gable had been. He said, if you put me in some of those southern colonial costumes, he says, I'm going to look like the gay doorman up to Beverly Wilshire. He said, don't do it to me. I don't want this film. The only way Mr. Selznick could get him to play the part was to promise him something that had been his lifelong ambition, namely to be a producer. We were getting ready for intermezzo with Ingrid Bergman. And so he went to him and he said, I've got this wonderful new Swedish star here. And uh, if you really want to be a producer, you may be the producer if you play the part in Gone with the Wind. He never read the book. He never read the words of any other character in the film. He knew exactly what he was supposed to say and period. Oh, don't leave me now. Have I your heart, my darling? I love you, I love you. You mustn't say such things. You'll hate me for hearing them. Oh, I could never hate you, and, and I know you must care about me. Olivia de Havilland had for some time been Selznick's first choice for Melanie. But she was under contract to Warner's, and they didn't like lending out their stars. It was only through her personal plea to Jack Warner's wife that she was released for the part. The three principals signed their contracts, and an announcement was made to the press on January the 13th, 1939. Edda Hopper's Hollywood. Mr. Selznick was two years deciding on his scarlet, and out of millions of American women, couldn't find one to suit him, which would seem to cast a reflection on every girl born here. I'm sure millions of Americans will stay away from the picture in a gesture of protest. The millions failed to respond to Miss Hopper's outburst, and in the South, they said, better an English girl than a Yankee. Walter Plunkett had designed over 110 costumes for the four principal roles alone, plus scores more for the other parts. Now they were being fitted and tested in front of the Technicolor camera. Laura Hope Cruz was Aunt Pity. There was a bunch of gorgeous Belle Watlings before Ona Munson was chosen. I'll bet the other ladies ain't grateful to me. And Anne Rutherford and Evelyn Keyes were Scarlett's younger sisters. I was so dazzled, and not since Birth of a Nation, uh, or... I, I can't recall anything in my lifetime that swept throughout America yes. and the world as, as this book did. No matter what, where you went, what city you were in, people were reading and weeping over this book. The echoes of Birth of a Nation with its notorious Ku Klux Klan scenes were hardly reassuring to the black audience and the black actors accepted their roles in a climate of disapproval. There was a very, very difficult period with the black press. They had threatened the boycott of the film because they were afraid of Aunt Uncle Tomism and the depiction of the slave. Under pressure, the word nigger was eliminated from the script and Selznick deleted all references to the Klan. According to his own lights and the standards of the time, he did attempt to honor the black point of view. Dear Jock, I have gone to extremes in the preparation and casting of the picture to avoid any derogatory representation of the Negroes as a race or as individuals, and to eliminate the major things in the story which were apparently found offensive by Negroes in the Margaret Mitchell book. I feel so keenly about what is happening to the Jews of the world that I cannot help but sympathize with the Negroes in their fears about material which they regard as insulting and damaging. Just 
come and they'll kill us all. They'll run bayonets in our stomachs. A truth to tell, Selznick took rather more time and trouble on molding the look and sound of Vivian Lee into his vision of Scarlet. Miss Lee should report regularly at 9 or 9.30 each morning. Work at least two hours on her accent, then report for fittings, then report for rehearsals with Mr. Cukor and for any photographic tests that may be necessary. I should like the photographic tests to include various experiments with ways of making up her eyebrows to make them look more natural and more in period. Different makeups and experiments with her figure, including particularly her bosom. Selznick, fearful of the social conventions of the time, also decided that Vivian and Olivier could not live together during the filming. David wanted his Scarlet to be the perfect little virgin Southern Belle, and nothing should tarnish her character. So he put 24-hour guard service around the house so that no one would come near her to try and take pictures of maybe Larry coming in or coming out. On January the 21st, Clark Gable arrived for his test. I am informed by MGM that Clark Gable refuses under any circumstances to have any kind of a southern accent. Well, Clark Gable was adamant about never again doing a costume picture. He had made Parnell, and it was a terrible failure. He was embarrassed always by it. The reason I didn't want to do that over the wind, here is a novel that is the top seller of all time. Now, people form opinions about characters, and they formed the opinion that I was the one to play it. They already had a preconceived idea of what they were going to see. Now, that's why I didn't want to play it. I said, too many people know this character, but my God, with Red Butler, they, if they saw one thing that they didn't like, they would have remembered back to the book. I had to be on my toes, and I do that. Between these two people, there seemed to be a cool friendliness. Gable knew that this was a woman's picture, and he treated her with the utmost respect. No, I don't think I will kiss you. Although you need kissing badly. That's what's wrong with you. You should be kissed and often. And by someone who knows how. Oh, and I suppose you think you are the proper person. I might be. If the right moment ever came. As the final preparations mounted, so the rewrite.